Hello, and welcome back to Crit and Crit. I'm Sint. I'm Axion. And we are continuing our playthrough of Mario Adventure and our discussion of uh, Rumpelstiltskin by the Brothers Grimm. Let's watch these turtles kick Mario's dirt <laughs> again. Yay! Ah, we are predictable, aren't we? <laughs> but this level's still easier than the other one. So! We've had an interesting tale here with our... particular choice of fairy story to continue this playthrough with. And it's one with a relatively small cast. Yep, we've really only got a handful of characters, and I don't think they really have names as compared to some of the other fairy tales we've done. Well, one of them does. <laughs> yeah, one of them does. No one else does. But, they at least have significant identifiers. Yep, so let's go ahead and start with the order of appearance, where we like, we have Dad, who appears once, and then disappears forever. You just gonna accept your fate? Nope, I'm gonna kill this thing. I just need to time it I'm... right. Okay. Yay! So did you not have to kill the one at the bottom? Nope, you only have to kill one of them and collect the ball they drop, but... If you okay. collect, when you collect the ball, it makes you stop moving, so if the other one's still able to attack you, it'll kill you while the end of level stuff is happening. Alright, so, Dad. He kind of depends on how it has been translated. Because the version I have seen most commonly is that he just straight up lies. And my daughter has the ability to turn straw into gold, that useless, useless farm food for, for livestock. We can turn it into something actually valuable. Because, you know, it's gonna look good to the king. On the other hand, there are some versions where he's talking about her strawberry blonde hair looks like gold in the sunlight, and the king just misunderstands what he said. It was just like, "Ooh, I like gold. Yeah, bring me your daughter, and uh, let's ever let's make, have her make some gold." But as that's not the version I found for this, um, I'm not going to go with that interpretation. So really, all I have to say is, uh, Dad's really desperate to get his daughter married off, which kind of tracks for um, a good job a European fairy tale because uh, the concept of a dowry is still very much a thing. We say, coming off the back of King Lear. Yep. There's also the fact that, like, milling... Well, it's a necessary thing because everybody gotta have their bread and you can't have that without flour. Of some sort. Um, yep, but don't pay well. <laughs> well. Also, mills are very dangerous. Because flour can be flammable. So when you have the, uh giant stone turning around on the other stone and creating friction, it is entirely possible that your mill can blow up. So it's not exactly a prestigious career, even if, you know, we need flour to have bread and therefore keep Society. things going. So yeah, Dad in this version just is a typical braggart, so not really a whole lot to say. We don't get to ever see how he breaks this news to his daughter, we don't ever get to see how she reacts to any of it, at least not to him, and he doesn't show up for the rest of the story, he's just gone after that. Which kind of, to me, implies that the daughter was completely and utterly done with him as soon as she was, she was married to the king and didn't have to deal with him anymore. I mean, wouldn't you be? Yep. Which uh, then brings us to the king. Because, obviously, he shows up because he's talking to the compulsive liar father. 
and his only priority is, ooh, gold. Never mind the fact that creating that quantity of gold in that short a time is going to completely and utterly upend the local economy and ultimately devalue gold because um, value is based on scarcity. So, you know. And the king, again, wants to punish the daughter and not the father, even though the daughter literally didn't do anything. Like, she was just, the only thing she did wrong was, you know, have a lying father, which she can't control. He's the one who told you the thing. Yep, but... But, you know, let's go punish the girl instead of the guy. We can't follow... We can't punish the, uh, father. That doesn't get across the message of, uh, what message were we getting you by? I mean, it gets across the message that you're kind of petty and insecure. I mean, yeah, there's that. I'm not sure that's the message they want to send, but that's the message they're sending. But yeah. Gives her the ultimatum, not just like, "Hey, I want you to uh, spin, want you to spin this straw into gold," because this is not a thing that should be thought to be possible, because <laughs> you know physics and chemistry are things. But no, if you can't do Oops. this thing, you will die. Not we'll just you know do something and deal with that later. We'll just dishonor you or something. But no. You have to do this impossible thing, or you're going to die. Even though you never claimed that you were able to do it. Yep. But your father did, and he speaks for you because... Well, it's that kind of society in that era. Yep. Which brings us to the girl herself. And, well... T let's be fair here. She spends a lot of the story crying, but wouldn't you? I was about to say, I think she has a justified reason to spend most of the story crying. Yeah, like, this will come up again later, but, like, something that I find also very odd about Rumpelstiltskin is, in most fairy tales, when you have someone put in a position like this, it's because of something they did. That is not the case for her. Like, with Hansel and Gretel, like, they get in a pretty tight situation because they go wandering off. Yep. The moral so, there is, you know, don't go wandering into dangerous wild wilderness. Yeah, or like Jack and the Beanstalk, like, oh, the, gi the giant is coming for you because you went there and robbed him multiple times. But, you know, he gets away with it because you just gotta steal from the right people, I guess, is the moral. Hello, ghost. Let's put up that, uh, that Susan Stohelic quote here. Yep. Ah, oh, Hogfather is so good. But yeah, so she starts crying because she realizes, well, what am I supposed to do? I literally can't do the thing I've been ordered to do. I'm going to die. Which, again, valid reason to have kind of a breakdown. But she does like she does take. They say that she takes stock of her situation before she starts having the breakdown. It's just she recognizes there's literally nothing she can do because her father put her in this situation. Yep. And it's not as though she's trying to get something for free out of this, like you might expect in of the situation. She's desperate to not die. So. What can I offer you? Um, I have this necklace. Here, you can have my necklace. Just please let me live through the night. Uh, you can have my ring. Um, I okay. I I'm glad you're here again to help, but I don't have anything more I can give you. Um, and I'm going to die tomorrow. And okay, give me your firstborn, buddy. I am not in a position to be thinking more than five minutes ahead for the sake of survival. Sure, why not? Which probably is something we need to talk about of like the whole um, making promises and deals under duress and very, very predatory lending practices. <laughs> yep. Rumble is Sally May. Sorry, sorry, they rebranded Naviant. Oh, I thought Naviant was just the con the uh, collection company. Let's just put it this way. Um, before I refinanced, um, I had letters from Sally May, and then they rebranded, and it was they suddenly were Naviant. So, 
I don't care what they say, they're the same people. I mean, yeah, I won't argue with that part. I will say, that was actually one of the best emails I ever sent, because they said, Congratulations, your balance with us is zero! How did, would you like to tell your success story? Like, how, you, how you paid off your loan? I said, I refinanced with, for, to it with a company that had a more reasonable interest rate. I never heard back from them again. You didn't give us the success story we wanted to hear, so we won't be printing your story. Hey, it was the politest version I could give them. I didn't swear. I mean... That's completely fair. But yeah, so so we have this this desperate young woman put in an impossible situation and forced basically to make the worst possible deal under duress with the alternative being certain death. She gets what she needs to survive. She does what she needs to survive. And then, a year later, when she has survived, she has moved past most of the trauma, in theory at least, and she has... <sighs> i move you somewhere more manageable. There we go. Uh, her creditor comes calling. Yeah, I know I'm running out of time. Like this is something I really do think is needs to be respected about this for this character. At no point does she just like stop trying as when she has viable options remaining to her. Like, yeah, she she starts crying because she's like, this is an overwhelming situation and I've got to process this, but she doesn't, like, she looks around and tries to find a solution before she does. When it come, when Rumble Stilskin comes back, she doesn't just say, oh no, all is lost. She starts, like, when he gives her the chance, she, she seizes it and tries to do, tries her best and puts in every effort she can and every effort she can afford to have others help her with to find the answer. So, yeah, there's there's that. Yep. And when he gives her the impossible choice of no, you have to pay your debt, she's like, is there nothing else I can do to not have to give up this child that I, th I never expected to live long enough to have? And he's like, fine, I'll give you an alternative. And she literally does everything in her power to track down information that will point her in the right direction to identifying him. She sends out mission uh, messengers and agents all over the kingdom and has them spend the entire three days looking for information. Seriously, this isn't over yet? Oh, I don't have time to beat him. Huh? Yep. I didn't have time. Uh, if I hadn't fell, fell off that one time, I would have been able to, to beat it. Ah, uh, stupid maze dungeon. Uh, anyway, she, she expends all effort. She is not passive or lazy about solving this. She does everything in her not inconsiderable power as queen to figure this out. The little man has given her a solution, and by god, she is going to solve this problem. Yep, which brings us to the little man. Yep. 
We can just call him Rumpelstiltskin at this point. Yep. Or Rumpelstiltskin is his name. Or, depending on the translation, Rumpelstiltskin, I am styled. I hadn't heard that one, but... Makes sense. That was the version I was here. I was uh, listening to before we started this episode, so... They did that so it would rhyme with child. Yeah, they... Like I said in last episode, they sometimes reword it. They, the version I've always heard is... Uh, they put the child bit in the first section and then say... The Queen will never win my, our game for Rumpelstiltskin is my name. Yep, the one I heard was, uh, and, th and I will have the Queen's new child for Rumpelstiltskin, for, for Rumpelstiltskin I am styled. Yep. And the main point of his name is just to be something... Ah! I forgot about the ghosts there. Uh, something ridiculous you that... You say, you made a boo-boo. <sighs> the, the point of his name being what it is, is really just to be something so ridiculous and abnormal that it's going to be impossible to guess. And this is something that we can see in the various different versions of the story that exist, which we'll get into a little in later episodes, but I'll just list off some of the names here by which the little man is known in other stories. He's called, in one story, Double Turk. In one, he is uh, Nagendumer. I'm sure that means something in German. Uh, in one, he is Zerkzerk. In one, he is Kugaro. And there is several more. So, it doesn't, as I said, it doesn't really matter what his name actually is. We go with Rumpelstiltskin because that's the version we have mostly known most of our lives and that most of our viewers have probably been most, most familiar with. But the only thing that his name needs to have from translation to translation is that it's weird and impossible to guess on, on your own. It's a fairy name. It doesn't follow any kind of mortal tradition or rules or anything like that. It exists solely to be something that is difficult to guess. Actually, um, the name Rumpelstiltskin, uh, Rumpelstiltskin in, in German means literally little rattlestilt. Uh, a stilt being a poster pole that provides for, for a structure. A Rumpelstilt or a Rumpelstilts was constantly the name of a type of goblin, also called a pop art, that makes noises by rattling posts and rapping on planks. The meaning is similar to a Rumpelgeist or a Poltergeist. I stand thoroughly corrected. <laughs> but it's not the kind of thing that you would guess as a name. Mostly yeah, like, honestly, if we, if we had this today, he'd probably have him saying, I am Spoopy Steve. Which would be equally hard to guess, because who would go for the spoopy part? Silly people on the internet. And how many silly people on the internet are going to make a deal with a fairy to spin straw into gold? Are you kidding? There's so many You're people right, on, the mind, who would be, on the internet <laughs> who would be up for free gold. Some of them might actually follow through with the whole pay with your first kid thing. Yep, I pulled myself up by my bootstraps, and this time, uh, Little Junior can do that, too. I don't know. Point being, the, the main purpose of giving him that particular name, other than apparently the reference to some bit of folklore, is to make him, make it difficult to guess, and for the Queen to have to have had the luck of her agent... Oh, right. Airship time. Uh, stumbling upon Rumpel Rumpelstiltskin doing his thing in the woods to learn his name unwittingly. Can I also just comment on, like, our messenger guy for a second here? Because he only has this one bit of relevance. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have any more names, but I did hear this person say that his name was Rumpelstiltskin. My dude, 
Do you want to listen to yourself again sl more slowly? That's all. Back to Rebel Salt's good. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. Oh, I can stand there. I did not know that. Oh, even better. I can stand where the coins are. See, it's an allegory. Having uh, stable fin uh, finances gives you a, some ground to stand on. There is a lot of invisible floor in this dungeon. Yep. More than I was expecting. <laughs> but yeah, Rumpelstiltskin is a, a very smug individual because, well, I have all the power in this situation. There's nothing you can do about it. I'm going to offer you an out, but it's going to be the most impossible to reach out. So I might as well not actually be offering it for most of the purposes of this story. And when it turns out that you have, in fact, solved my impossible riddle, you found where there wasn't floor. Uh, I noticed! <laughs> I'm going to be a very, very sore loser about it to the point where I literally rip myself in half. So it's like, I don't know what he was expecting to happen. He's like... <laughs> Honestly? It's a fairy story, and emphasis on fairy, in that I think this is, to some degree, Rumpelstiltskin playing by some kind of weird fey rules. Where, if you are challenged by the mortal, you must give them some method by which the game can be won, even if it is, one, if it is a method that is inherently, un inherently unfair. And honestly, what he reminds me most of, um, and I'm probably going to be getting this very wrong because I have very limited exposure to this character, it was like one episode of Justice League when I was a lot younger than I am now, Mr. Mixel... Mi Mr. Mixelplex. Yeah. Yes, I, I know exactly who you're talking about. Yeah, where the only way that Superman can get rid of him is by tricking him into saying his name backwards. So he tricked him into skywriting his name backwards while chasing Superman. Yep. Among many, many other things. Because he's not technically Fey. He's supposedly a, a critter from the fifth dimension or something like that. But for all intents and purposes, he's a Fey. He follows strange yeah. and bizarre little rules that only apply to him and those like him, and not... the normal rules that people have to follow. But yeah, like, when I first saw that, saw him in the Just a League cartoon, I instantly thought of Rumpelstiltskin, because I am here to wreak havoc and have an impossible to guess- uh, uh, to say name. I wouldn't be surprised if Mixelplex was, at least in part, inspired by Rumpelstiltskin. I'd have to look it up. Okay, um, I just was curious and control f it on the uh, Mr. Mixelplex uh, Wikipedia page. See also, Batmite, Rumpelstiltskin, Q, Joe... I can't pronounce that. How's it spelled? B-T-F-S-P-L-K. I do not know who that is. A character in Little Abner. I don't remember what Little Abner is. It is a comic strip by Al Cap. I don't know much about you on that either, so um, this is a rabbit hole I didn't mean to go down. <laughs> that sums up my life way too much. Okay, so he was inspired at least a little bit by Rumblestiltskin. Enough so at least that, the, that Wikipedia feels it appropriate to draw the reference. But yeah... Other than, you know, throwing the temper tantrum and killing himself, or just poofing off into nowhere, we do note that Rumpelstiltskin plays by his own rules, even when they're to his detriment. So it's not just a matter of, he changes the rules to whatever makes him win. That's what I think makes him actually like a fairy. He has to follow his own, he has to follow the rules, even if the rules are different from what human rules would be because those rules are just as binding to him as our 
the rules of our own reality are to us. Yep. But yeah, those are our uh, characters. <laughs> I don't really have anything else to add. Where is the exit? How do I get out? You'll probably get out in the usual way, if we're being honest. I mean, that's fair, especially from here, if I can't find another exit. Wow. That is a weird little trap. But, well, I guess it doesn't matter. <laughs> Probably a good place to end off for today, anyway. I'd say that wraps up our discussion of the characters, anyway, and Probably best if we go ahead and stop now before I get involved into another, uh, in the middle of another level. So we'll see you next time. Bye!